Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. As I said, I I'm back. It's June. It's June the 30th. Uh, I know this video is only going up on the 2nd of July if everything goes according to plan. But technically it's still June. I'm still on time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm very excited to tell you that this month I am participating in World Watercolor Month. I I noticed it was ju in July today, and today is the 30th of June, so for once I noticed on time. Because the past two years I noticed in August. Uh, and I... well... Enough rambling. Uh, I am showing you the. Um, this is a pencil case that I just uh, put some fabric on because I didn't like the pattern outside. And this is what I'm taking this year um, on a vacation, a small vacation. I'm going to be in Ireland for four days in Dublin, and yeah, I'm testing throughout the rest of the month. Um, how well I, how much I like this. Yeah, because I want to make sure that I take to my trip everything I need, as small as possible, because I only have, um, hand luggage? Carry-on, carry-on, that's it. I only have a carry-on, so that means I cannot take things that are very big and I have to be really careful with fountain pens. So these two, I'm going to start off with this because this is both my travel art supplies and my supplies for the World Watercolor Month. <laughs> but yes, I'm going to be changing the ink on this pen to black and I'm going to be taking my Pentel Pocket Brush Pen. This is a generic um, this is a generic demonstrator pen that I got of on AliExpress, I think. I don't like to order a lot of things from them, but I have to say, this is pretty good quality and it was like two euros, so I'm happy with that. And I'm going to take this in a small plastic bag like a Ziploc, just to make sure I don't ruin anything. So that's why these are outside of my pencil case. Uh, then I'm taking this pencil case. Again, this was a pretty cheap one. I don't remember the price. And it had... it was pretty ugly. I... yeah, so I covered it up. And I think... There are a few things in here that I'm not absolutely sure if I'm going to take with me or not. Mostly this pen, I'm not sure if I'm going to take it. But the rest of it I'm really enjoying. So let's start with uh, this. This is a, I believe, Della Rowney graduate sketchbook. It is an A5 one that I cut in half just so it would fit in here and it would be quite handy. Uh, it is a staple bound one. Um, I have the other half but I'm, I don't know where it is. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm using this one and as you can see I have already started it. Um, yeah, I've started... Uh, I have started it just to make sure that I enjoy using it because I've used uh, this brand and this uh, range before but just to make sure the paper is decent enough for watercolor this is not a watercolor sketchbook and it is not a mixed media one this is one that I found via Sketching Scarlet and I will leave her channel in the card there and, and also in the description box um, and yeah they are pretty cheap and they can take 
they can take watercolor even though they are not meant for it but yes that's what I'm using I am also using um, it has rubbed off but this is a Sakura Pigma Sensei in fine brush FB I hope you can read it if not it is in the description as well um, yeah and it writes let me just get this here it is pretty nice because it has some line variation you can get very thin lines you can get very bold lines and I really like it the only thing I don't like is that it runs out really quickly so what I've done is pull this section out and refill it with my own ink because this is a felt tip pen it is pretty safe to bring on planes and that's why I'm taking this one instead of a fountain pen The next thing here is a Derwent drawing pencil in Chinese white. Um, it is pretty nice. It is not, it's not super opaque, but I think you can see it covers pretty well. And I really like it for the texture on top of rougher paper. Even though this paper is pretty smooth, when the paper has a lot of tooth, this looks great on top of watercolor because it makes basically every wash feel like you used a granulating color even if you didn't and that's pretty cool it's also great for highlights <laughs> uh, then I'm using this I'm taking this water brush I need to clean it because as you can see it has a little bit of pigment inside it must have been absorbed the last time I used it and yeah, it's a, just a teeny tiny one that I'm going to have to take with me empty and fill it up there. For a pencil, I'm taking a mechanical pencil because I don't really like to sharpen graphite pencils. With a sharpener, I prefer to use a, a craft knife. Or I think that's what it's called, or an exacto knife. That's it. I prefer to use these guys, but you can take those on plane. So that's why I'm not taking any of it. So mechanical pencil. It, I think it's a 0 0.5. It's a big velocity, and yeah, it's pretty simple. Orange. I like it. I love it. It's one of my favorite pencils. Because mostly because it's orange and it's pretty comfortable. <laughs> now on to colored pencils. This is not really either a colored pencil or a graphite pencil. This is a multi-surface one. It's made by Lita. Uh, I can't read what is in here because I think it is in German. So if you can read it, it's great. <laughs> Um, and yeah, it is a multi-surface pencil. <sighs> I think it is all oil-based because it writes on everything. And it it does smudge, but as, as you can see, it doesn't smudge as much as graphite does. And that's great. Also, it writes on everything, so pretty useful. But because it writes on everything, I am using this thing that is from... Um, makeup pencil uh, eyeliner pencil I think I took this one and I'm using it for this just so I don't get everything smudged with black pencil then I'm taking a very cheap I think this is a makeup brush uh, it is pretty soft and I am taking this with me because it does not allow me to paint details and for that reason, I'm taking a very small water brush, but I'm counting on only using this one for larger washes. Uh, when I'm at the hostel throughout my trip 
or at home. Um, while I'm testing this thing. And yeah, I actually really like it. <laughs> then for colored pencils, I'm taking only six, yes, only six pencils. Uh, these ones are leftovers from uh, elementary school because for some reason my grandfather decided that I needed really great pencils for elementary school and I'm really thankful I love those pencils but I'm pretty sad that I almost used them up back then because they are really good and I think it was kind of a waste to use them then but whatever so as you can see this is my favorite one of the bunch it's the orange one these are these are watercolor pencils. By the way, I'm testing this. I'm showing you this on a non watercolor paper. So, yeah. I really like these pencils. These are the Stadler Aquarelle, I think. And, yeah, just so you have an idea of the colors I'm taking. I chose these colors because I think they go really well with the palette that I'm going to show you next. And yeah, that's why. That's the only reason. And because I really like them. I'll just put it here. Um yeah. I really like how reddish this brown is and as you can see I'm taking mostly warm colors even the green is a yellowish green and the only really cold color is this teal teal blue because the others are pretty warm and I like that. Then I'm taking, uh, I think this is a Muppet uh, pencil sharpener. That's pretty basic, I think. This is a Pentel high polymer eraser. This one I'm on the fence whether I want to take it with me or not. But it is a Koi coloring brush pen in, in orange, just plain orange. I really like it. But I'm not sure if I want to take it because I don't think I would need it. No. It is water soluble, but again, this paper is not great for this, so it's normal that it doesn't dissolve as well. Um, yeah, so put this back. Oh, I'm also taking a thin washi tape because I thought it would be great for sticking stuff in my sketchbook so yeah little flowers <laughs> just get this out of the way because I want to show you the star of the show I hope this is still recording it's not too wet it's okay. um yeah, this is that watercolor palette that I set up on the last video. I believe that's my last video. Um, that I will link there. And these colors, I really like them. The only thing, and I think I, you can consider this an update on, on the palette, I had to add Indanthron Blue or Indanthrin because uh, the cobalt blue didn't allow me to make darks dark enough. The cobalt blue would start to get chalky, chalky uh, if I used um, too much paint. So yeah, I decided to, to add some Edanthron blue there. Uh, but otherwise, I'm loving this palette. I already had to refill the Potter's Pink this blue and I 
also had to refill the cobalt blue and I'm not sure if I refilled the green or not I don't remember but these three I refilled for sure twice I think I am really enjoying this palette so just to show you how I use or plan to use well I am using so how I use this setup um, I'm just going to put these things in place and we'll be back to the real time thing this is a sketch that I made yesterday I think with the Sakura Pigma pen. I'm going to take this thing out because as good as it is as this setup is to paint while standing up you're sitting down this is a pain in the butt. Come on. Come on. Okay I can take it off. <laughs> Let's just pretend I took it off. So I'm using that makeup brush. It holds quite a bit of water and that's pretty nice. And let's see. Also, uh, the colors I chose for the colored pencils, the, the pink was because I don't really have a real pink in here because the potter's pink, as pretty as it is, is not a punchy vibrant pink and for that reason I thought it would be pretty cool to have a pink in colored pencil to add tex texture and color when it's not possible to do that with the um, with the watercolors and that would be a way to reduce the amount of paints I need to take with me and yeah, that's the <laughs> that was the thought process. I I drew this on location, but I'm painting it from memory. So the colors might be a bit off. <laughs> but I think it's fun to try to to capture the colors you saw before I think it's pretty interesting how accurate or inaccurate you are when doing those things uh, so I, and I also wanted to practice um, painting quicker and not just quicker but looser and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to participate participate in World Watercolor Month not only this year but the other two years I also wanted to to participate but unfortunately I either didn't know on time and then didn't have time during the month when I noticed this has had happened you know stuff happens but this year I want to do it I think I will learn a lot from that if you want to know what colors are on my palette I have a on this particular palette I have a video sorry my headphones just slipped I have a video I think it's the last one I put but I will have it linked there and also in the description box just in case um, but yeah that video shows how I set up this palette and why I set it up this way so yeah I'll have it linked okay let's leave the roof <laughs> Now this part was brickwork and 
was one of the features that called my attention. But as much as I want to give it brickwork tex texture, today is being a hard day with words. As much as I want to give it the right tex texture, <laughs> I don't want to overdo it because it defeats the purpose for me at least. And that part is also brickwork, but I, again, I don't have the space in this place tiny thing with such a big brush. I don't have the space to do that. And that was on purpose, you know? Just, just... But yeah, I've been using this setup for a few days to get used to it, so I don't just start with the new setup on a trip <laughs> I think that would not be a great experience um, but but yeah I'm really enjoying it and I hope I'm in frame I'm trying a new not a new angle per se but kind of a new setup and cannot see if this is in frame or not without getting up and then climbing a step <laughs> on a ladder. So, let me just... Okay. Then I want to add a tiny bit more paint on this side. This red, not red, it's more of an orange. It's called Light Red by Mission Gold. It is, I believe, a three pigment blend, but I absolutely love it. And for that reason, I don't mind it having more than one pigment. I think that if it behaves well in mixes, if it looks good on its own, and if it's useful to you, it shouldn't matter too much if it has a bunch of pigments. And in this case, I think that bunch of pigments is what makes it so pretty because it gives, it has the glow of the PY150, the nickel azo yellow. It has the glow of the, the the brown, the red brown that is in here, which is PBR25. And then it has the the other the other color, I don't remember what the pigment is, but it also has a red slash pink in the mix that makes it have this beautiful hue, so I like it and I don't mind it having many pigments that was the only thing I wanted to tell you <laughs> basically and let me make it here a bit more watery let's just, yeah there's a brick wall there and I really don't feel like drawing every single brick so here we go okay uh, so I ran out of space in my card and for that reason <laughs> uh, you missed a little bit of the painting action here because I didn't know it had stopped recording so I just copied the files to my PC and formatted the card. So, um, what I'm doing now is put that brick wall further away by desaturating the um, 
orange a little bit with some cerulean blue and with some of the gray I had left over in my palette that is a mix of a bit of everything basically and this is almost done because this is supposed supposed to simulate how I would probably paint while traveling meaning I wouldn't have much time to paint so yeah I need to mix a bit so I need a bit of a down throne blue in here there we go the down throne blue with the PG8 green that makes it great cooler dark green that is perfect for traditional Portuguese windows and I painted something that should be white with the green that's great but the thing is this green is beautiful <laughs> And I don't really remember, but I think there was something green here as well, so I'm just going to throw in there, pretend it was green, along with these, because I don't really remember <laughs> that well. And then here there was something that could be green as well. And I think I'm going to add the green to those shadows and to this roof because this roof was a little bit like this. And I can just dry the brush a little bit and absorb some of that water. And this is a really nice way to add uh, some, you know, to make the thing look more cohesive. You just use the same color throughout the painting in the shadows and that kind of stuff that makes everything look like it belongs together. And I really like that. So just have to be a little bit careful around there so I don't smudge green everywhere and I think this is mostly done um, yeah I had to wait almost an hour for the files to copy just to finish this little bit on camera <laughs> but yeah I hoped you I hope well yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and consider maybe subscribing. Um, I'm really enjoying this little set I put up together or put together, whatever. And yeah, I really am enjoying this. And yeah, I can't wait to test this thing in Dublin. <laughs> Uh, also, I am making a um, print, a lino print that you will go do that you are going to see next week, maybe, or if not next week, at least somewhere this month. Uh, it is a reduction print. It's not finished, so I'm not going to show it right now. But I, I am updating frequently my Instagram with stuff about that print and yeah I'm really excited about it thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys next week hopefully and yeah don't forget to follow me on Instagram to see what I'm going to post throughout July in World Watercolor Month yeah see you then I guess <laughs>